All right, so I came up with my with my format. I had my approach. I just had to get started. I needed to break ground. And I knew I wanted to start it with compositing. I love that because I do a lot of visual research and I use my my folders of resources. And so I set up my format at a high resolution. And then the first image I really responded to was this. And this is actually modified a little bit from how I had saved it. Like I, I have erased the background and I flipped it, but it's just a bunch of different mushrooms, right? But what I liked about it is that these mushrooms look a lot like something called brain coral, look like sea life. And it made me think about San Antonio and its history being much, much older than the 300 years of the city, um, of the long period that we were a seabed and we had sea creatures and we're kind of built on a foundation of that. And so I use that as my base. I also found in my, thank you, in my research that there was an English painter named George Stubbs, who I knew from art history, but he painted this painting of his, which I've always liked. In the year 1769. So there's good old George Stubbs. He mostly painted animals, a lot of times in kind of religious allegories. And this is a, a theme he painted a lot, kind of animals either getting along or not getting along. But this painting has a lion on the back of a white stallion. And here's kind of a close-up of that same theme. And because he likes this idea uh, and the symbolism of it, like who is the lion? Who is the pure white stallion? You know, is it is it the age of reason getting attacked by by the romantics and by emotion? You know, whatever it is. But it also makes me think of of kind of death by horseback, or it makes me think of the Comanches a little bit, like really really primal, scary uh, creatures. So I knew I wanted to include this painting as kind of a centerpiece to the headdress, and because it was painted in 1769, this one. This is a little study for it. it was painted in 1762. Um, I know their public domain, right? So I went ahead and, and composited in that painting, kind of erased the different elements on top there, and I wanted to kind of build my own headdress out of these materials. Then I wanted to include some pop art aspects, right? So I looked for, for comic book panels. And what's the difference between the Comanche and the French and the Spanish? Well, the, the Europeans had firearms, right? And so no, these aren't 18th century firearms, but just this sound effect and the little uh, graphic fire there kind of talks about new explosions, new new things to um, react to. So I threw those in. And I decided I need to make those a little bit smaller, those are a little too big, I'm gonna tuck them behind. And then I found some contemporary graffiti that looked a little um, Mayan to me in terms of its its repetitions as a lot of jawbones, which is something you'll see. And I knew I wanted to use some aspect of that. And it's basically now just formal decisions, filling up certain corners. And I started layering in that portrait, another kind of graffiti, more for the drips here than anything else. Playing with size. Another public domain portrait. Replacing the buffalo hide of the headdress with some of that graffiti. Overlaying some stuff, moving stuff around, layering in parts of the George Stubbs painting. And now it's kind of just selectively letting things come through or not. and kind of rebuilding the headdress out of coral, layering different mushrooms on top as decorative elements, and on and on and on. And then I wanted to layer in the uh, a part of a, a French 18th century military uniform, 
since they were trying to ally with the Comanche against the Spanish. And then I try to put in some San Antonio things like mountain laurel seeds, dot it with red, find design solutions, and clean it up. And then say, do I really want all that text? I want it in some places, I don't want it in others. I keep working on it. And then I say, oh, I forgot that I wanted to brand it. I want to put, you know, the date right on it to show that everything's kind of growing out of this year. So I find this, um, this liquor label, it's maybe for a whiskey or something, but it had this logo type of 1769. And then I, I make my own text that goes around it. And so I want to make a little bit contemporary. So I say, feeling fine, 1769. And then this was my piece. But right now, this is a composite piece. And if my, my goal was to make it all digitally, I would have failed terribly because I was compositing of things that were not high enough resolution. So look at that resolution. Terrible. So you always want to think with your end product in mind. But remember, my idea was to composite it and then to execute it entirely with colored pencil. So the compositing was the big step, even though no one will see this, right? Then what I do is I print that out to size, just on cheap paper, um, and I transfer it. I cover the back with powdered graphite. I put it up against my watercolor paper. I kind of trace through the elements, and then I have a drawing, and then I'm able to carefully draw around feeling fine 1769. Because it was too intricate to stencil with all the little dots, so I just did it all by hand. And I use color race, um, colored pencils, which you can get really sharp. They're a harder lead that Prismacolor used to make, and they used to be, they were made for accountants generally, so it's a limiting color range. And it all worked out. So then you get to work. And sometimes I will write my steps ahead of time. So follow your procedures or follow in what digital art is called a workflow. So I knew I was going to first transfer my image, transfer my digital design because it was low res. Get a loose drawing. Right? Then I was going to um, work out from the lettering, from the white lettering. I wasn't going to stencil it. Then I knew I was going to fix it, to use a fixative with a UV matte clear spray. Because the problem with um, colored pencil is it smudges. And if you're working on something for a long time, you can undo the work you've done. And then I knew I was going to frame it for display. And I knew I was going to frame it with a shadow box with acid-free foam core in a natural wood frame, right? All of that is thinking about your process, your workflow. So it goes from the steps you'll make to make your image all the way to how you'll display it. So think of the display. Think of how your audience will engage with it. And sometimes that will make your ideas better. It will certainly make them more effective to your audience. So think of the display exhibition of your, your work. Okay, notice at no point have I said, now what am I going to say about this, right? What is my artist statement? And that's something that the, the gallery wants, and that's something that I want from your, from your assignment. So for your artist statement, you're just going to reflect back on what you are trying to do. And I've said a lot of those things just in this idea process. The things I wanted to bring together, the things I wanted to 
um, showcase. Now, what were some of the big problems I got into? Well, I found a portrait that I really liked. I made that kind of central, but it was too strong, right? And so then I came up with that branding idea. Well, let's just put the, let's make the date, you know, front and center, kind of commercial art techniques. And then that kind of hides everything. And now that portrait's kind of peeking behind, so it doesn't have as much power. So the artist statement, you just argue for your idea. The worst artist statements I've ever read just tell you in detail about what they did, technically. And that's just boring, right? So you're going for, you're answering the why. Why does your work look like this? Right? right. What was the original idea? What did you want to share with us? That's what you're answering. And as long as you do that, it will help us understand your idea. And it will help us enjoy it. Okay, so that's it.